These latest pictures from the Burmese capital Rangoon, taken after last week's coup, show the army using force to put down demonstrations, firing indiscriminately at a march on the American embassy. The anti-government protesters, men, women and children, tried to take cover as the firing continued. As people cowered helplessly, more shots rang out and another man was wounded. The injured were carried to safety in a hail of bullets. The soldiers, determined to end all opposition to military rule, apparently firing at anyone that moved. The government says 200 people died as the army crushed resistance to the coup. Opposition sources say the number of people killed in the street fighting is closer to a thousand. I think Unu is a very wily politician, and the minute Unu's name uh, returned to uh, the debate which is going on at the moment, most people expected him sooner or later uh, come to the surface. And uh, I think um, over the last 40 years, people have um, concentrated rather on Nay Win, but Unu is the other figure whose shadow has loomed large over Burmese politics over the last 40 years. So I think um, in terms of what likely to happen... Neither Ong Ji nor Aung San Suu Kyi have any kind of political party. They're just names who have surfaced. Ong Ji is an army critic of Nay Win, um, and Aung San Suu Kyi is a person who's lived abroad all these years. She's just um, got a powerful name because of her father, and she might well develop into an important person in the future. But I don't think there's any around him that has got all the key body. I think they're trying to show to the outside world that there is some. Uh, suitable alternative already in place in Rangoon to take power from the government. Well, it's not clear because Unu does have the backing now of some influential generals from the past. Um, Brigadier General Tin U is with him, who is a who claimed the other day to have the support of two thirds of the army. It remains to be seen whether that's true or not, um, but. Certainly he's built around him a coalition which seems to appeal to all sections of the community, including some of the ethnic minorities. Um, so he's moving very carefully, and I think he wouldn't be moving now in such a public way unless he was fairly sure he was going to have the backing of some of the military at least.
Rangoon was today still in the grip of a week old general strike with huge demonstrations on the streets. But there's been no evidence of the violence and bloodshed of two weeks ago when soldiers opened fire on the protesters. Instead, the crowd appeared almost euphoric, sensing that in the wake of announced concessions, it may have the government on the run. Yesterday, the huge crowd was addressed by a former army brigadier after he was released from a jail sentence in Pol for criticizing human rights violations. Today, a new political opposition figure came to the fore, Aung San Suu Kyi, the daughter of Burma's national hero Aung San. Addressing a crowd of some half a million people, she called for the resignation of the government and a united, disciplined and peaceful return to democracy. It is a very moving experience in a way. It's, it's very moving to think that there were so many people wanting democracy and so many people who had gone to such a lot of trouble to come. I believe a lot of people came from outside Rangoon. Aung San Suu Kyi was two years old when her father was assassinated in 1947. She was educated in Burma and India, where her mother became the Burmese ambassador. At 19, she came to England to study philosophy, politics and economics at Oxford, gaining her degree in 1967. After that, she worked for the United Nations in New York before returning to Britain to marry an Oxford don in 1972. They have two sons. She's visited Burma regularly and returned there in April this year. There's an absence of leaders in Burma right now, in the opposition. There's only two or three people around uh, who are of any, and she's the only one who's young uh, around. And her name is very, very famous in Burma. It's uh, like if George Washington's son had come along in 19, uh, 1830 and said, uh, I'd like to be president of the United States. It would have a certain ring to it. And she's that sort of figure in Burma because of the family and historical connections. Aung San Suu Kyi's father, Aung San, was assassinated six months after these pictures were taken. He'd been an instrumental figure in securing Burma's independence from Britain a year later. Before the war, he was actively anti-British and helped the Japanese invasion, but switched to the Allied cause before leading Burma's drive for autonomy. The Burmese people love my father very much, and I think they are ready to support me, of course, and my father's daughter. Evidence of the growing pressure on the Burmese government came earlier this week when Mang Mang, the country's new civilian leader, the third leader in a month, went on national television in an attempt to placate the people. In lifting martial law, he apologised for the army's treatment of demonstrators two weeks ago and announced that on September the 12th, the ruling Socialist Party would meet to discuss a referendum on a return to a democratic system. The question is, will the government last that long? I think the government will have a very difficult time surviving this. The pace of events is getting beyond control, uh, and unless they can do a deal with some of the opposition leaders who are emerging, I think they're going to have to make more and more concessions. So far, they don't seem to be making any attempt to stop us, and I'm not sure that they can really stop the people anyway. I don't think they can, because the people are so very, very strongly for democracy now. They've had 26 years of one-party rule, and they're so tired of it. I, I think there's no stopping them. Do you think that you will get a parliamentary democracy? I think we have to get it. Just what political force Aung San Suu Kyi will muster remains to be seen. Despite the obvious comparison with Pakistan's Benazir Bhutto, she has no party behind her and has spent some 28 years living away from the country. But what's clear is Burma's politically ripe for opposition figures to seize the initiative. One Western ambassador said today... I think the government will go down.